Good evening. Three weeks ago, the American spacecraft Discovery One left on its half billion mile voyage to Jupiter. This marked the first manned attempt to reach this distant planet. Earlier this afternoon, the World Tonight recorded an interview with the crew of Discovery at a distance of 80 million miles from Earth. It took seven minutes for our words to reach the giant spacecraft, but this time delay has been edited from this recording. Our reporter, Marty Namer, speaks to the crew. The crew of Discovery One consists of five men and one of the latest generation of the HAL 9000 computers. Three of the five men were put aboard asleep, or to be more precise, in a state of hibernation. They were Dr. Charles Hunter, Dr. Jack Kimball, and Dr. Victor Kaminsky. We spoke with Mission Commander Dr. David Bowman and his deputy, Dr. Frank Poole. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. How's everything going? Marvelous. Have no... <laughs> we have no complaints. Well, I'm very glad to hear that, and I'm sure that the entire world would join me in wishing you a safe and successful voyage. Thanks very much. Thank you. Although hibernation has been used on previous space efforts, this is the first time that men have been put into hibernation before departure. Why was this done? Well, this was done in order to achieve the maximum conservation of our life support capabilities, basically food and air. Now, the three hibernating crew members represent the survey team, and their efforts won't be utilized until we're approaching Jupiter. Dr. Poole, what's it like while you're in hibernation? Well, it's exactly like being asleep. You have absolutely no sense of time. The only difference is that you don't dream. As I understand it, you only breathe once a minute. Is this true? Well, that's right. And the heart beats three times a minute. Body temperature is usually down to about uh, three degrees centigrade. The sixth member of the Discovery crew was not concerned about the problems of hibernation, for he was the latest result in machine intelligence, the HAL 9000 computer, which can reproduce, though some experts still prefer to use the word mimic, most of the activities of the human brain, and with incalculably greater speed and reliability. We next spoke with the HAL 9000 computer, whom we learned one addresses as Hal. Good afternoon, Hal. How's everything going? Good afternoon, Mr. Amer. Everything is going extremely well. Hal, you have an enormous responsibility on this mission. In many ways, perhaps the greatest responsibility of any single mission element. You are the brain and central nervous system of the ship, and your responsibilities include watching over the men in hibernation. Does this ever cause you any lack of confidence? Let me put it this way, Mr. Amer. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. We are all, by any practical definition of the words, foolproof and incapable of error. Hal, despite your enormous intellect, are you ever frustrated by your dependence on people to carry out actions? Not in the slightest bit. I enjoy working with people. I have a stimulating relationship with Dr. Poole and Dr. Bowman. My mission responsibilities range over the entire operation of the ship, so I am constantly occupied. I am putting myself to the fullest possible use, which is all I think that any conscious entity can ever hope to do. Dr. Poole, what's it like living for the better part of a year in such close proximity with Hal? Well, it's pretty close to what you said about him earlier. He is just like a sixth member of the crew. Very quickly get adjusted to the idea that he talks, and you think of him uh, really just as another person. In talking to the computer, one gets the sense that he is capable of emotional responses. For example, when I asked him about his abilities, I sensed a certain pride in his answer about his accuracy and perfection. Do you believe that Hal has genuine emotions? Well, he acts like he has genuine emotions. Um, of course, he's programmed that way to make it easier for us to talk to him. But as to whether or not he has real feelings is something I don't think anyone can truthfully answer. 